there's good and bad. The bad is, you know, dude, you're trying to figure life out and you don't, you know, that there, it's hard enough without just being treated like an animal with no feelings. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you do have them because your hormones are raging and you, and teenage boys are as insecure as teenage girls, mm -hmm. except they're not allowed to talk about it or show it. Do you know what I mean? Right. They're just not allowed to. The, I will say the good, the only good thing is when I fall down, I don't, re, I don't look for someone and I don't mean literally fall down. Yeah. F literally, figuratively. I did not grow up that when you fell down, somebody was there to pick you up. You had to figure shit out. Right. And so, th so th I would say of guys of a certain age, especially there is a fucking figure it out mentality that whether good or bad, you guys don't have. And, and I would say this also, you know, what's interesting is look, man, it's just like parenting everything else. There's a positive and a negative. If I, one of the things that I love about you, dude, is that just the way your mom and I parented is it was flowy. And right now, if shit, you're very flowy, mm -hmm. whatever we could do a schedule, but it doesn't matter. Mm. And if we're on a schedule and something bumps us off, it's fine. Yeah. We, we, you, 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 you live your life like that very successfully, mm -hmm. as do I. Um, the negative, that's the positive. The negative to that is. We're not great at being super structured. No. Right? Correct. And so I would say the same thing. So when people like say, this is the, you know, you're good if you do this, you're bad. There's, dude, what is important to you? And what yep. was most important to me wasn't that you and your brother and sister could live in a structured, it was life isn't a lot of times structured. Right. How are you going to, how are you going to react when, you know, dinner isn't at six mm -hmm. or you have to stay three hours late for your job or mm -hmm. you don't like the person you're working for all these bumps, right? That I, I, but no dude, you and me both an hour in a row in a class. Nope. I'm right. Good. I'm good. So it's interesting, man. That's why I like, I don't, I, as I've gotten older and, and, and in the world is so much black and white now, meaning you're either this or you're this and nobody allows for gray when the reality is the entire world is gray. The entire world is gray. Mm. Even the biggest of the big issues, dude, even like the, 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 uh, 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 women, uh, trans women in, in girls sports. Yo, dude, if, if you ask me a, and I hear an argument from both sides, yeah. I, I'm with both sides. I'm with the trans woman who wants to compete in sports. Yeah, and be viewed, it, at, it, viewed it, as in society as a woman. Yeah, 100%. completely get that. I also get from a, uh, a, a girl, uh, um, I don't know what, what we're referring to him as, biological? Or how does, what's the politically correct way to say, it, I don't even know. Uh, uh, I, I, born a woman in a man's body? I don't know. No, how no, no. I'm talking that. about the women, born, born a woman, born a woman, feel like a woman. Right. A woman. right, right, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. a biological. I don't. You, I can get. I, I, we haven't even. So, by the way, we haven't even said started the podcast. We might start this part though. So what I would say is, you could see from both sides. Yeah, this transgendered woman would like to compete as an athlete, and yeah, this biological woman feels like that is a a, a um. Oh, advantage. A advantage. A cis woman. This is what you're... Oh, okay. A cis woman, yeah. Well, whatever. No, I, was yeah, just, yeah. I, was, I, was, I just remembered what... It, is yeah. it, it feels like it's an advantage. Yeah. And I don't know enough about... I have opinions, but I don't honestly haven't researched it enough to know what, you know, the... It, how much testosterone is left in your body and all that stuff. But point being, the world is gray. You're allowed to have your opinion on either one of those. There's no... And honestly, both of them are valid. I, I, if I That's, was a transgender it, woman, I would feel the same way. And if I was a biological woman who was competing as a boxer and this jacked up woman walked into the ring, I'd be like, oh, I, I'm about to, I think, and I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I think there's a 
difference in bone density? Yeah, you know, it's funny, actually, uh, not funny, but uh, my girlfriend Iman, she listens to this podcast called Ologies. Yeah. And they were talking something, it was like whatever the ologist is on bones, I don't know, or something like that. But they were like, can, it's, is it true that you can tell whether it was a male or a female just based on the skeleton? And they said, yes. Yeah. So I think the bone structure and bone density is different between male and female. And this is all I'm saying. The pro and, and then we'll get into the pod and get the yuck yucks. But one of the huge problems that we have in society now is that we do not allow for somebody else's point of view. And we consider somebody not flexible. Oh, you, you're not going to change. You know, you're not flexible. Well, I'm not flexible in my thoughts because I don't agree with you. I listen to you, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 you're allowed to have a different opinion because, uh, should transgendered women be allowed in sports is not a, there's no factual. This is not a two plus two equals four. Right. This is an opinion. And so people are allowed to have their oh, opinions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do not live in an age now where you're allowed to be gray. Or you're right. allowed to change your fucking mind. You know how many times I've changed my mind about something and things in the last 20 years? Because I've grown. Information's grown. But as soon as you change your mind, you're like, fucking. Yo, dude, I want a politician who's willing to change their mind. Change their mind or change our mind? Change their minds. Oh. You, dude, I want a politician to be presented with new material and be like, ooh, I was wrong about this. You mean taking accountability? Yeah, or just or just hearing something from somebody th that is like, yo, a dude. A different I, perspective? Yeah, dude, I'm so out on Republicans and Democrats on the label because you're asking me blindly to vote for somebody because of the party they're in. I say we get rid of fucking parties and you run as a person. I like this person. I don't like this person. I like what this person's saying. I don't like what this person's saying. But you're asking me to swallow the whole dick all the time. And all, you know what I mean? Do you know how many people I know who are, would consider themselves half Republican, half Democrat? Or conservative uh, fiscally, but socially super liberal. But you're asking these people to choose between those two instead of allowing somebody to run and be like, hey, much like most of you, I believe a little of this and a little of this. Right. I believe the Republicans are right about this and the Democrats are right about this. I'm running on that. Do you know what I, I mean? I mean, it, it, it makes more sense to do it that way, but doesn't it? Yeah, but you know that's not going to happen. It's too much money in politics. But it's too much. There's way more than just money. I think involved in politics. Just like well, that's I'm, the uh, that's the yeah. I think that's the driving thing. But I would just say this: yeah, it's a bummer that you're not allowed to have an opinion and discuss things. And y yo, dude, uh, opinions are just that. That does not make them facts. Yep, right? true. And so, speaking of politicians, Epstein's list drops today, dude. I can't wait to see who is getting fucked. <laughs> I'm so excited. I By can't, the way, I'm super excited to see that list. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? Yeah. We've been talking, you, not we, you've been talking for about 12 minutes. So. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hey, Man. My name is Jacob Wolf. I'm Josh. We switched that up because I'm trying to get some words in here. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, man. A couple things. What's up, man? So here's where we're at. Let's just, by the way, guys. New Year's Eve, amazing. The shows in Phoenix are fucking amazing. You guys showed the fuck up with crazy energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an amazing weekend. So thank you all so much. Um, we have a fun uh, me on mushroom story from Phoenix. <sighs> yeah, we do. Um, we, uh, we had Postinos, which was de oh, delicious. It's, but look, I'm going to clip this and tag Postinos a gazillion times. Please. Please, please bring a Postinos to Vegas, preferably like, you know, the Southern Vegas area. Um, and if you want to make a gazillion dollars, go put two in LA, one on Ventura Boulevard and one in West Hollywood. We do love some Postinos. You're welcome. And for anyone who hasn't tried it, go eat there. It's so good. It is pretty delicious. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah it's pretty delicious. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, an update. And by the way, uh, we're off this week. We are in Richmond, Virginia next week. Oh, it's going to be cold. We are in Indianapolis the week after that. 
And the week after that, man, I am filming my special in Vancouver. Get those tickets now, everybody. It's going to be a good time. I can't. I ran that hour last night for the first time in probably six months. Has it been six months? Yeah. 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 I've kind of put that material away for like six months trying to develop new material. So I'm going to spend this month kind of just doing it over and over again. Before we, before Bef- you film it. Yeah, yeah. Before we film it. But, and, um... So it, it, what a great time. And, uh, and then comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates, obviously. Let's give a little update on the name. So Wolfpack and Wolf Den were taken. In, were in the lead. Yes. Wolfpack and Wolf Den both taken as podcast names. Yes. Now, Wolfpack, I believe, is taken by Jordan Peterson, so we're not even going to fuck around with that one. No, I'm good. Wolf Den... Um, is a little less popular, but still current. Okay. Okay. Here, I'm going to throw two other names at everybody, and I would love to hear everyone's opinion. Ready? Mm-hmm. House of Wolves and Generation Wolf. I like both of them. House of Wolves also is a My Chemical Romance song. So I, I like know, that. and we could start this. We could start every episode with. Eventually, we could just have them on. Dude, that would, that would be amazing. They're going to be here next year. How crazy would not, that be? Not next year. It's already 2024, dog. Oh, that's right, dog. So they're going to be here on your birthday. How great would that be if we interviewed them the day on your birthday and then went and saw them live in concert? Ooh. All I'm saying is like it's it's, 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 a, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, marketing point to get them on the show. I love House of Wolves. I wonder if I would have to buy that part of the song to for to, for them to let me play at the beginning. Please come on our show for them <laughs> for them to. But but um, those are two. So we're gonna uh, the the Wolf Den Den ah. of Den of Wolves. Uh, I like Wolf Den. Like uh, welcome to the Wolf Den. Me too. Den of Wolves makes it sound like Den of Thieves. Okay. You know? So let's... We're, Wolfpack is out, unfortunately. Yep. Um, House of Wolves, Generation Wolf, I Don't Hate. Your mom loves that one. She came up with that one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, uh, Wolf Den. Wolf Den, yes. We'll have to Google who whose that is again. You want me to do it right now? It's pretty current, though. It's pretty current. Yeah, you want you to do it right now. Um, and so... Anyways... Uh, so we'll talk about that. Jacob, you have uh, a couple of um, things you want to talk about uh, today. You have a, a news article about some dude who f- was found in the engine of a plane. Oh. You want to talk darts? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't do... It's the Wolf's Den. Yeah. And it's fucking Jordan Belfort. The Wolf of Wall Street, dude? Oh. We, we definitely can't do, that. can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does the Wolf's Den. We could do the Wolf Den. Oh, is it worth getting? Is it worth trying that? The wolf den, the wolf's den. Yeah, and it's weird because he doesn't do it like the wolf's den, like V. He does, well, he's the wolf, so it's the wolf's den. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm back on maybe the wolf den. Is that going to fuck up with Google searches? The wolf den, the, the wolf's, wolf's den? den. What do you think? So if you add your names to it, it becomes a different title. So the wolf den with Josh Wolf and. That's what oh, we'll do. okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. The yeah, Wolf yeah. Den with Josh and Jacob Wolf. Okay. Okay. We'll think about it. But yeah, yeah. yeah that's definitely one we should. Okay. So the Wolf if Den. If we can't, it's okay because I, that's not an argument we want to have with him. But the Wolf Den oh. with Josh and Jacob Wolf, I like. How's the Wolves and Generation Wolf? Guys, we want to hear from you. What you think? Leave it in the comments. Yeah. Um, do you, let's, let's start yeah. with mushrooms. Okay. We'll start with the mushroom story. So. I, I'll do my perspective, and then you do your perspective. How about I do my perspective, and then you do yours? Because you have you have everything that happened. My, yes, okay. my, my perspective is just what happened. Okay, but can I can I mention these real quick? Yeah, he's got the Gratitude Elevens on. I fucking love Guys, that. Look at these. Yeah, nice, nice, right? Nice Jordan Eleven Concord colorway, but the white isn't patent leather. It's nice, like like the genuine leather. I like it. I like it. A lot. And I had forgot that I had ordered them. They showed up at the house. What a great surprise! I, I like, wish I did that, dude. Let me tell you something. Dude, I wait. Hold on. Let's see what I'm wearing today. When. Oh. Match matching with the whole another sweatsuit, another velour sweatsuit brought to you by my lovely girlfriend. Do you like the red glasses or the yellow ones, or they could look like orange in here, huh? 
Dude, your yellow glasses have looked orange in almost every other aspect since you've said it. What about, what do you think about these, the red ones? Too, too strong. Like, too strong? Like, like, I like the colored shades, but it's like, it's, it's too bold of a color. Not bold, but like, Got it. Okay. do you know what I mean? Yep. Okay. So mushroom story. So we are in Phoenix, Arizona. And we only had one show on Friday night. But if for those of you who have seen him live or us live, you know that Friday night late shows, he does mushrooms before he goes on stage. And it was no different. It was a Friday night, only one show. So he was like, yeah, sure, why not? Proceeds to do him. It's a great time. He's way higher than he thinks he's going to be. Because usually you and I have a scale, right? So mm -hmm. we can weigh out how much he's going to take. He just pulled out a mushroom and said, how much of this do you think I should eat? And I was like, you should just eat like the upper third of it. And he did. And we let it kind of ride out. I we, ate half. You ate more than it? I ate a half of it. Oh, you were definitely fucked up. Oh, I did. And that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And so on the drive, back, first of all, the drive back was great. Because I'm driving me, him, my mom, and Iman back, my girlfriend, in this giant Tahoe. And uh, I've been telling you for years or for the last three years at least, that you would love Iman's music taste. Because yeah. it's so eclectic. It's got a little bit of everything, but it's all bangers from yeah. all different decades. And she's playing music, and the first song she puts on was uh, uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. And right as Tears it went... Yeah, and right as it went... Doo -doo 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 -doo, you went, you went mm, I love this song. <laughs> 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 I do! Yeah, I know. It was fucking awesome. I had a Tears for Fears poster in my room when I was growing <laughs> up, dude. Hilarious. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but so uh, we, uh, we were, <laughs> Iman and I were laughing about that when we got back to the hotel. Um, but we drove back and, and we're all like hanging out and then we're up in the elevator and I was like, you're going to be up for a little while, aren't you? And he was like, yeah, probably. And then another one of my favorite parts, is we were standing in the elevator and as the elevator started to go up, you lost your balance. Do you remember? Yeah, oh yeah. And he just like, but he like kind of just like on one foot just kind of fell into the door of the elevator as we were going up. But the best part was he never lost eye contact with me. So I just watched his face do this. Yeah. As you like, as you drifted, it was like, can I tell you, you what happy? the best part about that guys? The big, the, we're not getting on this. Is that legit? The only part of my body that hit the elevator door was that my head. Yeah, yeah. I didn't put my hands out. I didn't duck in with my shoulder. It was such a slow fall. It was a slow too. fall. And, and my head just went gunk yeah, loud, yeah, dude. Yeah, you didn't make a correction. <laughs> I felt like a toddler. Yeah. I didn't put my hands out or anything. Oh my God. And so I went up to my room and we, we went our separate ways and uh, I had called you. I was like, I'm probably going to go get some food. Do you want something? And you said, nah, I'm not getting up anymore. And I was like, okay, cool. And I went and we got mellow mushroom pizza that mm -hmm, night. Mm -hmm. Got a buffalo chicken pizza. Fire. Super fire. And um, I take a couple of edibles and I go to bed probably around 1230. And I wake up at 240 to my girlfriend nudging me saying, hey, your mom is calling me. And I was like, what? I was like, I was like, answer, answer, answer. And she, I put her on speaker and she's like, hey, I'm like, what's up? She goes, sorry to wake you. Um, She's like, but, and then don't be alarmed. And I was like, all right, I'm up. What are we talking about? She goes, but your dad's not in the room. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? She goes, yeah, he's not in bed. He's not in, in the little couch suite area where the TV is either. He's not in the room. And I was like, all right, hold on. Let me check my phone. And I checked my phone. And the only text or communication I have <laughs> from this high ass man is a text at 12:41 a.m. 11 minutes after I went to sleep that said are you up and do you have food <laughs> 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 and so i immediately i immediately go well he might have been hungry and was walked down mill yeah. But then also, I'm not going to lie, my brain started to go a little bit. I was like, he is the weakest human alive when he's high. I hope he didn't walk down mill by himself in his Jordan, in his Chicago ones. Let's explain high as shit, what drift. you mean by that. Like my, when my dad is high, he can't even open a bag of chips. Yeah. My, like, my strength is sad. His awareness is social awareness. Not well, well, which high 
My, mushrooms. I'm. I'm. Just, mushrooms. You're the most aware person of all time. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also. I'm ready. To, I'm. I'm like, ready to mingle. I'm like, ready to like chat. Levels of ten, you're at a thirty-seven. Yeah, like, I'm ready. To roll. Like mushrooms. Alert! Alert! Head is always on a swivel, mainly yeah. because you're fucking walking in circles. Yeah. On weed. No. 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 No social awareness nah, whatsoever. Nah, none. Nah, none. 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 And at this time, your mushrooms had worn off, and you were just kind of high on edibles at this point, weren't you? I was. It was about 50 50 at this point in time. But generally, also at that point, you're still. That's like a loopy you. So yes. you're still not socially aware of what's no, fucking no, happening. No, no, no. I'm pretty. I, I was pretty stony baloney because yeah, I yeah. was trying to be able to go to sleep. Yep. And I was like, well, I hope he didn't get pushed and somebody took his food on Mill. And also. Were uh, you just picturing me laying in the side of the street? Yes. I didn't know what was happening, but also that was like me. I had just woken up. My edibles were still hitting me. Like, can I ask you a mom, question? The first thing mom said was, Dad's not in the hotel room. Can I ask you a question? No, I mean, look, you're gonna ask, do you really think that you would get you've now toured with me for a minute? Yeah. How how am I on drugs? Do I have my shit together? You're you're pretty you're pretty good at it. Yeah. That's that's why I was like, I was like, okay, well, I was like, hold on, let me. I was like, you, she was like, I'm going to go down to the front desk and see if they had seen him at any point in time. And I go, okay, that's a great idea. And, sh and then I hang up and I sit and I call your phone. I probably, I called you probably about four times in a row, hoping that the constant vi like vibrate would wake you up or wherever you are. I figured you were sleeping somewhere in the hotel. I was like, he's either downstairs on a couch or he's like, he had to have gotten the second room. Like, there's no other way. Like, what? why he wouldn't be in that hotel sleeping right mm -hmm. now. doesn't make any sense. And so I called you a bunch of times and then I was like, babe, can I track him? She goes, does he, does he share his location? I go, no. She goes, do you know his iCloud email and password? I go, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually I do. She goes, how? I go, it's my email and password. Like he has our original iCloud account was set up through my email, mm -hmm. which is why the dick pic shit happened. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. I got roped into that somehow and yep. tricked, bamboozled. You know what I'm Hood saying? Hoodwinked, even. <laughs> <laughs> Hoodwinked, especially. Yeah. But so I was like, yeah, I actually do know all that. She goes, great. And she sent me a link to find my iPhone. So I typed in the Apple ID and iCloud. And I was like, I'm going to track this motherfucker. I'm going to see where he's at. And since you didn't have your precise location on, which is a setting you have to have, uh -huh. when I when I brought it up, Hey, hold on. I'm going to, Matt, I'm going to send you the picture that I took. And it was just a circle around the city of Tempe yeah. that said, this iPhone is located somewhere in this area. <laughs> and I was like, well, he's still in Arizona. Yeah. So that's yeah. cool. Or at least his phone is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, he's still in Tempe, I guess. And like, like, I don't know if like, can he'll post it. Yeah, like, I, like, like this is the picture I got. It's yeah. just a circle of the city of Tempe, and it's like, yeah, I was in there. I was in that circle, and I, I sent it to mom, and I was like, well, he's still in the city at least, and she just kind of laughed, and then she, after I'd done all that, I, it said there's a button on when you go to find iPhone that says play sound, and so you can like play it if you find it, like if you're near it, it'll play a sound, so you can go find it. So I'm thinking again, he's sleeping somewhere. So I'm going to play this sound like an alarm and hope it wakes him up. So I played it. I stopped it. I played it. I stopped it. And then, and then I don't know, fucking probably 10 minutes later or no, no, five minutes later, mom calls me. She's like, all right, I just went down to the front desk and I was like, did it? I was like, what took you so long to get? It was like, that was like 25 minutes ago. She goes, yeah, I stopped on every single floor and walked around. Every, I walked up and down each and every hallway to make sure your dad wasn't high sleeping in his underwear. She in thought I was in my underwear walking around the hotel. I mean, look, granted, drugs does do that to some people, but you're not those people. <sighs> no. I'm walking around in my underwear? Well, you're a grown up. You're a pretty professional drug user. Thank you. Like, I, I will give you your flowers for yeah, sure. You're, you're a pretty well kept, kept yeah, together... Listen. Drug Fuck, user. Fucked up and walking around in my underwear. That's not my MO. No. I'm no, not gonna do that. Me either. No. No. It's that's not that's not who we are. Because I'm also old enough now where I don't put I don't ingest an amount to make you to that's that point. Right. That's and right. also, that sounds like zero fun. No. You wanna have that memory? Like, no, I'm I'm do I'm you, good. You want me to give you my rundown of the night? Well, hold on, okay. Okay. And then five minutes after that, I decide to call my dad again. And I called. 
And on the first ring, he picks up. And you were like, what's up? And I was like, where the fuck are you? And he goes, I'm in another room. And I was like, what? Why the fuck are you in another room? He goes, it was really hot in our room and your mom was sleeping and I couldn't sleep. So I went and just booked another room just for me to sleep in the night. And I was like, all right. Did you see all the texts and calls? And you were like, yeah, I, I was getting to it, but you called me. So I figured I would, uh, figured I would check in. And I was like, why don't you go ahead and call mom? <laughs> and you were like, and you were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. I go, okay, I'll see you in the morning. And we hang up. And then I called mom and I was like, I found him. She goes, what? I go, he's sleeping in another room. And she goes, yeah, I, I, I just talked to him. I go, yeah, I, uh, she was like, Jacob, I am upset with your father. <laughs> she was like, and I was like, mom, and I don't want to see you have the right. Like, I get it. Like to, to go to sleep thinking your husband was there and then to wake up at 3 a.m. and to see him not there, but knowing he just did some mushrooms and practically could have fallen out of a moving elevator had the door been open and he just fell right into a wall prior to going inside. Like, I, I get it. Like your husband was there and then he wasn't. It was some fucking magic. Listen, first of all, I told her I was leaving. Yeah. See, you said that also. And she responded to me. That part I didn't hear. Yeah. Let me just tell you my night. First of all, it was one of those Jurassic Park mushrooms. Oh, I was there. Um, and I was like, I'll take it after the show and I'll be a little high, but I think I should be fine. Yo, on the, on the drive home, you know what? I, I, here's when I can tell mushrooms are going to be fun. It makes everything kind of darker. And almost like cocoony for me. Uh, it was like, and the the it, everything felt super cozy and warm. It was, I, it was like I was walking around in a warm hug. It was just like I was like, hey, hey, hey. and so we're riding in the car. The music was perfect. I, her, her shuffle's good. Dude, not shuffle, but her playlist. I was. It was honestly one of the best highs I've ever had. That's fun. It was so warm and friendly. The music was great. And uh, we get back to the hotel. I don't remember a whole lot about the ride, except how much I enjoyed the music and the vibes. And we get back to the hotel. And, um, you know, we take the ride up the elevator. I, I bang my head on the door pretty good, <laughs> laughing it up. I had a little bruise the next day. Pretty Super funny. funny. Yeah, dude, I hit that door hard. Yeah, it wasn't light. We get back to the hotel room. And I'm laying on the bed the wrong way, like so horizontally to the vertical. Oh, oh at yeah, the yeah. bottom of the bed on the covers, eyes closed. Eyes closed on mushrooms is like a whole different. Your your brain just takes you wherever you want to go. Right. And I'm just sitting there. Fa I, I think a blob face down, just vi complete in my own world, vibing. Um, I think your mom had been trying to talk to me, but I think I was out in the, in the outer space. Mushroom land. Yep. When she got into bed, I was such a blob. She got into bed, and when she pushed her feet down to the bottom of the bed, it <laughs> knocked me <laughs> off the bed. <laughs> so I fucking floop, floop on the ground. Ooh. I get into bed, and I'm like, I'm just going to take some melatonin and try to power this to sleep. So I took probably 60 milligrams of melatonin. Cheapest. And, and uh, I'm just getting hot. And That's I, a lot. I can't, you know, I'm fidgety in bed. I'm, I'm yeah. starting to be less mushroomy. You couldn't turn the AC on? Uh, for whatever reason, I was just running hot. No. I'm getting less mushroomy and more high on an edible. So I'm getting a little fidgety. The, the melatonin is starting to get there. Uh, I, I can't sleep. I can't go in the living room and sleep. There's no blankets in there. So I tell your mom, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go get into the room. I got to be able to watch. Cause she didn't watch, want to watch sports center. Right. That's what puts me to sleep. Yep. Dude. So I get downstairs and I, and I'm high and I'm sure I look high. Right. Right. And I, I'm wearing the outfit of 
somebody who just stole one of everything from everybody's room. <laughs> Dude, it is like the worst hodgepodge. Of, I love it. And I walk up to the woman and I go, hey. I go, I, I have a room, but I need another room. But just till tomorrow. And you can charge me for the room, but I just need another room to sleep in tonight. And she goes, okay. And she starts to... Clack, 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 clack. And she's just typing and typing and typing. And, 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 and I, you know, when you're taking mushrooms, you're not rude or. No. And I think I was said a very, and we, I go, I go, I'm sorry. I should have asked, are there rooms available? And she goes, will you let me do my job? And I was like, uh, I don't like to be chastised when I'm high or on mushrooms. I don't like to be chastised, period. And I was like, oh, she was like, it's hard for me to really do my job if you're just standing here. And I was like, where what am I supposed yeah, to do? I, I was like, okay, I'll stand over on that side of the fucking lobby. So I went and stood on the, dude, I, because I was high, I went and stood on the other side of the lobby like I had just been put in timeout. <laughs> and, and then, um, I was fucking, I was like, I don't want to walk back over there and ask her. <laughs> that lady's, I, that lady's me. Yo, dude, she, but then she looked at me and she waved me over. She goes, I'm ready for you. And I was like, oh my God. And I walked up to her and she said, you can have this room for free for the night. Be out of there by 11 a.m. Oh, and I was right. like, okay. She redeemed herself. She felt bad for stuff. When your you. mom went downstairs, she said to the woman, hey. I can't find my husband. And the lady behind the counter goes, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom was like, yeah, how'd you know that? And she, she said, yeah, I ran into him earlier tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming I slurred it up a little more than I, what I just said to you. Oh, you were probably a I very... Was, a very memorable guest. Oh, the dude, I know for sure only one of my eyes was working. Yep. But by that time of the night with that many drugs in me, my right eye closes. Plus the melatonin? Oh, dude, oh, yeah, my right eye up. straight up you closes. You were half asleep. Oh, dude. I, 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 my brain was, my body was like, hey, but my <laughs> brain was like, Beep. so when I was asleep in that room, because sports center, sports, sports center will put me to sleep in the first <laughs> port, port center. Port center, sort center? <laughs> sort center, sport center, sport center. We'll put me to sleep in the first 10, 15 minutes. I, I, I find that show to be so boring. It takes I, less than yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I, I, yeah. Mostly because, and, and look, man, I, I used to like it a lot, but I find the anchors to be exceedingly boring now, so it's great for sleep. And so um, I, uh, I fall asleep. And the only thing that woke me up, dude, was your, the beeping. The texts weren't waking me up. The calls weren't waking me up. It was that fucking bee. It was like an emer a test from emergency broadcast. Oh, it system. was loud. I know how loud that sound is, and I know it's startling. So I was like, if he's anywhere near it, he's going to... I thought a fire alarm was going off. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got to go down and get your mom. And I was like, oh, it's my fucking phone. And then I looked, and there was like 70 texts from your mom and about two from you. No, just one from you that said, yo, where, where are you are? at? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could tell you were not worried. You're a grown ass man, yeah. dude. Like you're you're a grown human being. I'm not, and I don't drink, so I'm, I don't lose my faculties like that. No, and, and, and if again, I'm gonna take enough mushrooms to end up wandering around the streets, I'm gonna take it around other people, so I have a buddy system. Yeah, you people. That's why you don't do drugs by yourself, unless you have the buddy system. I like, like and I don't like doing drugs by myself. Yeah, but you always have safe ways home and like back yes. door. Like you're in a controlled environment, yes, yes. like. You know what I mean. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. The, but buddy system is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Always do drugs with a friend. Dude, I, I, um, <laughs> and then I love that message. Yeah, I can't, I can't, that's going to be a, just a great, I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. Uh, just me doing this and it's always do just drugs with a friend. Just always do drugs with a friend. Um, uh, oh, update. I am, I, uh, I have not gotten enough opinions on if I do OnlyFans for my toes, but if my toes are, painted black if that is considered blackface and racist. I haven't got enough opinions yet. But as soon as I get a final say, I will come back to you guys. But I'm thinking about, I'm going to start that Tonely Fans. Okay. 
and right. and all the money for me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and one last thing before you get into yours, uh, our producer Matt came to the show uh, last night in Vegas and brought his lovely wife and and the other guys who work here brought their wives. Um, and without giving anything away, Matt, that is basically the special I'll be taping um, in Vancouver. Do you think people should come see it? Definitely. It was it was really, really funny. Y you know, you said something about relatability. And one thing I love about stories, and I forgot to say this to you before, but when the mics are off, but like, here's the best thing about stories and why I like them. You don't ever even have to have been in that situation to relate to the emotion of the story. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that is, I, I, when you say the stories are very relatable, it's one of my favorite things. I mean, after funny, it's one of my favorite things to hear, but, 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 um, I, I am adding one extra story that Jacob is your favorite story. Yeah. Ever. yeah, yeah. I, not, not ever, but like, it's, it's definitely, Oh, it's top three. I think yeah. like it's, oh, it's just so and, good. and leading up to this release of this special guys, I am going to start on YouTube dropping old hour sets. Some material you guys have probably never seen before. Some you might have in different, but in different incarnations. I mean, well, you've, you've been recording sets for a decade. Probably, yeah, but I think right? it'll be, yeah. And I think it'll be cool to kind of just see how some of the older sets flow and how you've evolved. Kind yes. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That'll be cool. Um, but all right, dude, hit me with what you got uh, for this week's episode. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm not usually a darts person, but have you been following the World Darts Championship uh, the last couple of weeks? Absolutely not. Okay. So the only reason I know... Following the World Darts... Now, I like darts. The World Darts Championship. You heard that it, correctly. It, and I know that in like in the UK, they sell out like... Yo, know, watching that shit on TV with crazy. that crowd is electric. Crazy. Oh my yeah. God. In a pub, whatever... It, it is legit electric. It is amazing. The English can drink and have fun with anything, and I fucking love it. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I, They're so funny to me. I love that. But so there's a story that's kind of taken the world by storm. It's just, there is a 16-year-old darts phenom named Luke Littler, and he has... Are you doing this story with an accent, or are you just sticking to what you got? No, I'm just sticking to what I got. Okay. Luke Littler is... Le legitimately flying like this kid has come out of nowhere to beat some of the world's best they've they've won this championship before all these dudes are like in you know in their 30s their 40s they're veterans of this game this kid is 16 years old and he's blowing these people out of the water like like in in, in a legit blowout fashion he just played in the finals the world darts championship finals against the number one player in the world uh whose name is luke Humphreys. Um, they actually played two Lukes, two Lukes, two Lukes, one Humphreys, one Littler. Um, and Humphreys actually played Littler in a pub when he was 12, four years ago and said, even then he was scary. It's just like this crazy Cinderella run that yeah. has completely taken everybody. This kid, Luke is being, um, like he's being asked to get taken photos of with like professional English footballers. Like the whole world knows this kid's name right now. And every day he still goes home. His mom makes his bed and he eats ham and cheese omelets. Like it, it for me, it's like the craziest like, I, out of nowhere. Like I just like stories like this are really just like, he's like the fucking, he's like the, the Ronaldo of darts or I, the Messi of darts. Like, I, it's amazing. I love playing darts. I think, you know, that we had a dart board growing up. We used to throw darts at each other, actually. What would happen? Do you do that thing where you put your hand on the hand on the dartboard and you hope your buddy misses it? No, we would turn out the lights in the basement and everybody get two darts and they could just whip them whatever direction you wanted to. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a different time, dude. <laughs> it was a different time. You, I would. <laughs> you. We, we, you know, listen. We, we were. It was a. It was yeah, maybe we, we were that. unsupervised. You know, uh, that's <laughs> more than unsupervised. <laughs> it was, dude. Smart. Dude, you could have killed somebody. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But did but, anybody any catastrophic injuries? No catastrophic injuries. Did you generally miss each other? Gee, except for once, and that <laughs> was the end of that game. <laughs> Who got hit? Uh, and I, what? And where? Right in the shoulder. Oof! You heard. It wasn't the normal because. Down in my basement, 
Okay, my dad, there's a pool table down there. When we were growing up, there was a dartboard. Um, and you guys were getting this picture of this huge opulent. We were poor. We had this crooked ass pool table. We had an old dartboard. Um, I, I would tell you some right now. I, I actually bet you this, dude. I bet you for about, oh, well, for at least 10 years, eight years. <coughs> my me, mom sorry. was the only one working. She worked at UMass Amherst in the Office of Internships. So I think maybe she made $27,000 a year. Okay. So I think that's what we lived. Right. So when people are getting this idea of this basement, like this huge man cave. No, no. And it was just, you know, the, but my parents... Fallout shelter. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my parents, but my parents were very, they sacrificed a lot for us. It was amazing. You know, when we first moved into that house, we all had our own separate room and they slept in the living room. Really? Yep, 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 yep. Um, they sacrificed a lot. But my dad in the basement in the Northeast, a lot, of, it was very damp. You know, they had those basements so for floods and right. you know, water and... And, uh, or, or, or no, 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 uh, uh, they had those basements. I, I don't know why they built the basements, but they, but they were damp. They were underground, you know? And so he put plastic up over the cement wall and then put wood over the plastic. So the, all the walls were wood. Okay. Wood boards. So you would hear when you threw the dart and you missed, you would hear gunk. Yeah. 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 Gunk. Cause it's stuck into the wood. Yeah. 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 But every now and then it would hit like a couch or, yeah. yeah, yeah. But flesh made a different sound. Dude. And that was, you heard like a, you heard gunk and then a gunk and then a gunk and then a, and then you heard, turn the fucking lights on. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone goes, what? And he said, turn the fucking lights yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, dude. You hit me with that door. Right in the fucking shoulder. Who was it? It was a buddy of mine. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it was not, um, yo, dude, I used to, Howie McCutcheon. And Amir Syed used to come over every Sunday. We would watch football and order pizza and we would bet on, the, we'd make bets on the pool. And I, you know, I knew the curves of the table. And like, they definitely pay for pizza every week, dude. Oh, Amir, yeah. dude, Amir used to get fucking taken every <laughs> week. Amir Syed, my man, I know you're not listening to this. And Howie, dude, Howie was one of my oldest friends ever. But um, yeah, dude, uh, 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 we used to throw darts at each other. I love playing darts. I used to um, hustle people darts, but oh yeah, are you a good darts player? Oh yeah, you're a pretty good pool player. Yeah, but but um, I, I I love the the how into it the when you watch darts live, it's so and and, and so much electric. S it's singing and collegiate and it's electric. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's the one thing that I don't like about professional sports in America. That, the, the singing and the collegiate feel and the, oh, hey, oh, hey. Yeah, and you get yeah. it in Seattle if you go see a Sounders game. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like professional football and all that shit. Nope. Not so much, huh? Nope. That's why I like. Is like, that why you like soccer? It's, it's yeah. It, f football is just like. You call it soccer. I call it football. I'll call it footy to make it easier. Okay. Footy, footy is like, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I fell in love with that game so fast after hating it for pretty much my entire life. Yeah. Well, you hated it because you didn't like to play it. Correct. I wish I did play it though when I was younger. The, I, I watch what some, like how people, how some of those players move in the game. Like nowadays are highlights of just like. They're incredibly athletic dudes. It is astounding yeah. how athletic they are. But I would say the same thing for soccer and hockey. Awesome to watch in, in person. Terrible on TV unless you love the game. Right. Same with baseball. Yes. Well, in soccer and hockey, though, live, you can see how, fat, how athletic these people are. Right. When you're there, hockey, when you're down by the ice, you're like, oh, these are big fucking dudes. And moving. they're moving so fast. Yeah, but you don't see the, how, because it, it looks so slow right. and the puck moves so right, slow. right. In soccer, too, you also don't get really a good, um, where you're like, oh, these dudes are fucking athletes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, how hard yeah. it is to skate like that? At I'm high talking about soccer. Oh, oh, yeah, even that. Like, I wonder how much, like, how much the average person runs during one of those games. I guess it, it depends on what uh, position you would play, truthfully. If you play mid, 
If you played this, if you played in this like a center midfield position, you're probably going to run the most because as a center midfielder, like you're helping, you're like if you're depending on what kind of like position or style position you're playing or like formation wise. Let's Google. Like it. your center mid will play like help on defense, but then also help on the attack because the central midfielders like you you should be playing your offense through them. So they should be they should be like the maestro of the. Uh, let's let's Google it. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. Ready? What am I googling? H- how. How long does your average soccer player run? How far? How far does the average soccer player run in a match? And I am going to say it's four and a half miles. Is that crazy? Four miles. I'm saying four miles. Uh, The distance run per game in soccer. What is it? Um, I mean, I don't want to. A large field, a fast moving ball, and a rare substitution means soccer players can expect to log some heavy mileage over ninety plus minutes. Midfielders tend to run the most, sometimes reaching nearly nine and a half miles. You know what's fucking crazy about that? Is they're not jogging, full sprint. They're fucking dead sprinting. Yeah. You and here's by, by the way. You know all I think about when I hear that. It's the same thing when I thought about Michael Phelps. You can eat whatever you want. That's all I think about at my age. I'm like, oh, they could have waffles four meals a day and they could run. They're they're exercising so much. Yeah. Their body just fucked. That was the one thing. But then you see Cristiano Ronaldo at 38 years old, who still looks like a fucking... This is what I'm saying. Monster. Dude, this is what I'm saying. Michael Phelps, uh, all his accolades, all the gold medals, all the people that he's met, the, he gets the best weed. He lives a great life. The one thing that I was ever only fucking a little jealous about was that dude ate anything he wanted in large quantities every fucking meal and still looked like a straight up V. Yep. Yep. It is for, I mean, that's kind of how it is for uh, me awesome. right now. Yeah, yeah. It, it is for that. That's how it was for me too. Yeah. yeah. I do, there's, by the way, there's a new and, and, and I, you know what? I think, and by the way, you challenged me to a tennis match. You're going to get your ass kicked. Can't wait. I, I can't wait to see what happens. Well, I'm going to tell you what happens. Or can I tell you what's going to happen? Sure. It's the same thing. You sure you want to do pickleball first where I can just skunk you and we can get it over with? No, nah, tennis is more fun. Why do you think that you have a better shot playing tennis than pickleball? Because I can move more and I'm a little more athletic than you are. These two things are true. <laughs> However... I have a little more stamina for running back and forth and... It's, yeah, it should be fun. I'm going to tell you something right now. All I got to get you to do is run from one side to another. You, you wait, 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 wait. You pull a muscle, you forfeit the match. This is the only thing I'm I worried about. I didn't say I was going to beat you fairly, but I'm going to beat you. I, I'm going to tell you right now. Do you know uh, what I mean, Matt? Like, that's all I got to do. If he pulls a muscle, he forfeits, I win. I, I can beat you, and I can't even serve overhand right now. I've never served overhand, period. Right. I can't do that with my shoulder, right? So I'm going to have to serve sideways. And I would still beat you. I would even say you won't get a game off of me. Six love. I, I can't imagine you would get a game. Uh, okay, hold on. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. It goes, it's, it's 15, 30, 40, and then you, get, then you win a... Four points a game. Four yeah. points a game. You're saying I'm not going to win a single game. Not we, we, a only, game. we only play one set? Well, you said you wanted to do a shorter match than usual. No, no, that is not what I said. You said, do no. we have to play the normal length match? No, I didn't say do we. I said, are we going to play a full length match? And you said, and you said, why wouldn't we? And then I said, because instead of doing five or three three-minute rounds for boxing, you had to do three one-minute rounds for boxing. With the three-minute rest in between. Correct. <laughs> so that's why I asked, are we? Because I need we to can, know if you can handle we it. We can play as long as you want, but you don't want to do best of five sets, do you? That's long. We, neither one of us want to be. How about the best of three sets? No, but you, so you scared I'll beat you in five sets? No, dude, it should be so boring to beat you six love, six love, six love, but I will. You you have to beat me in three straight sets. Yeah, six love, six love, six love. Well, Dude. So you're so hold on. So I'm willing to bet I'll win a game. Are you will? That's the only thing you're willing to bet. You went from super confident you were going to no, win. No, no, no. You I'll, went from I'll super. Bet more. Okay. Are you saying you can win? What's the bet? You can win or you can get a game off me. 
I don't know because I've never played tennis before in my this fucking life. This is why you won't be able to win. Well, I think it'll be fun. I, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident I'll do better than you think. The, you're backtracking so much. You, you went from you, you I will make, beat you because I'll hit back and forth. Yep. So I will, I will win a game you make me, to you make I'll be better than you think. You make the proposition. Okay. I will beat you three straight sets. You won't win more than two games in any of the sets. So I have to win a set in order to beat that bet. No, you just have to win three games in a set. I'll still... Listen, if if the first set ends 6-3, the bet's over, you've already won. No, and not, I have not and I have I have three three games to do that? You don't you have three sets, but you once I win a set, it it starts over. You have to win three, you have to win more than you have to win two games that set. Two games is a push, oh, three games is a win. Two games in the set. Yeah. Oh. Do you want to do three games total? How no, about I'll, that? Do, I'll do two games in a set. How about we do how about how about this? I'll give you three sets to win four games. Three sets to win four games. Yep. So that means I got to win two and one and one and the other three, other two. You, you, three games is a push or we should do, we should do the hook. We're in Vegas. Somebody's going to win. We don't want to. Yeah, no, no, there's no push. So over under three and a half. No, but I say four. So over under four and a half. You got to, now here's what's going to save you. Wait, over under four and a half when you said that I was going to get four though. I say you don't get over four, and you are saying you'll get more than four. Oh, oh. So four and a half. Four or more. I don't want there to be a tie, dude. That would be three and a half. Yeah, okay, fine. You want to do three and a half? No, no, no. Here's here's the one thing I'm... If I was going to be nervous, here's what I would be nervous about. The third set, how tired I'll be. It, and in particular, not my wind, because I'm in way better cardiovascular shape than I was in the boxing, you know, I have a torn labrum in my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So I can't do any overhand stuff. And I just don't know what that's going to be like. I think that'll be okay. I but I, I haven't done it forcefully. I know how I'm going to beat you. How? I'm just going to hit the ball really high into the air every time it comes over the net. So then it bounces up and then you have to hit it like that. Or like you'll try to time it sideways and you'll just miss. I'm going to tell you something right now. You, you will never get an opportunity to do that because I'm going to hit it to your lousy ass backhand every time. Every, I'm going to serve it to your yeah, backhand. I think, you're gonna, I think you're expecting that you're going to be able to hit the ball with a decent amount of power. Because you've never seen me play tennis, have you? You have a bum right shoulder. Yeah, I do. But I, I, will, I will go operation before I let this me lose. Now, <laughs> I do have to stretch. I have to start stretching now. Okay. And you, when we, you're, when we you're, have to bring the fucking tape measure in so I can tell everybody that I'm 5'11". Uh, you see, okay, hold on. I was thinking about this this weekend and because of my free time because this still sticks in my head because you're not 5'11". Here's my thing. If he was 5'11", he'd be telling people he was six feet. The fact that he's saying he's 5'11", means he's 5'10". This is what I think I am. I think I'm 5'10 and a half is what I think I am. It's what I've always been. Five ten and a half. We're going. By the way, we're going no shoes, no hair counted. We're going. Yeah, big, like okay. height. Yeah. yeah, just making sure. Five ten and a half is what I think I am. Five ten. You're saying five ten flat. No, I'm saying below five ten and a half. Remember, because you asked if it was going to be yeah. above the five ten and a half or below, and I said below. I'm saying above. Well, I know you are. Okay, um, but we this tennis match and the other thing you challenged me to was a karaoke contest on. The strip. On the strip. I did. I did. We each are going to do three songs, and whoever gets the most tips wins. Correct. And we'll film it. Now, do we do it as, like, we show it as a competition? So, like, I'll walk up and do it, and then, like, you'll be waiting right behind me. Like, like you could be, like, talking shit or, like, you know, like, booing me or, like, something. Not booing me, but, like, watching me perform, and then, like, we alternate, and then you come up, and then, like, we do it like that? Or do you want me to do three, and then I leave, and then you do three? Because I feel like singing three strong, three songs straight is going to be a lot. I think three, strong, three songs straight is the way to get the most tips. No, because if people liked you when you were on first, and then they were like, well, let's see what this person has to offer, and then you're going to be terrible, and they're going to be like, where's the other guy? And then, I'll, then they'll be waiting for me to come back, and then I'll come back out, and they'll be like, woo! I think it's three songs in a row because sometimes it takes a song to get people to put put their hand in their pocket to tip. 
What three songs are you going to choose? And then we got to go. What three songs? Uh, I don't know. I, I might By go... the way, are we airing the first part of the podcast about the... I don't know. You tell me. You were the one who was yabbering about it. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, I think we probably... Sure. I think we probably will. Might as well. It, yeah, it, and it seems... We'll see it when he sends it to us. Okay. But yeah, you keep that first 12 minutes in there. Um, what song? I don't know, man. Like, I'd probably do like... Uh, I'd probably do like... I I wonder if I want to do it like funny or if I want to go like like upbeat or if I want to go like and actually try. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like I'm going I'm going a little beach. Me too. I think I'm probably going to do uh Bismarck Key. Just a friend? Yep. Good one. Um you got to go crowd favorite time. Yeah, and Bismarck Key gets everybody going. Yep. Um what the one that I want to try? I don't know. Like it could be "Lose Control," it could be a Sam Smith song, it could be a Zach Brown song. I don't know. Like that's gonna be my my audition song. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the third one is like "Pump Up" gets everybody going. I don't know. Something along the same lines is kind of like Biz Marquee, like a uh, well, maybe like "American Boy" by Estelle and Kanye West. I think I'm going to go one funny, one real, one wild card, meaning I might go, I was thinking about doing, and I don't know if we'll get flagged for being able to die, want to dance for somebody. It's a great one. Oh, do you remember what else we were laughing about in the car? Sorry, before we go, we got, wait, no, yep, uh, 308. Yeah, we got yeah. some time. Um, do you remember what else we were laughing about in the car on the very next night on the drive home? Huh. When she was, when Elon was playing music, do you remember what song I was doing? Uh, you, you and I were laughing up front to? Uh-uh. So she was playing uh, Tell It to My Heart, Taylor Dane. Oh, yeah. And it was, yeah, I was doing that up front because I fucking love it when that happens in the song. And that's Iman and I literally sit in the front seat and go, when we're together, and you were just sitting there laughing in the front seat. Amazing. Iman was like, What was so funny? And I was like, Oh, I was just, by the way, I want to tell you a couple things. A couple times this weekend, and I appreciate this, by the way. And I, I want, you, want you to know I appreciate it. So don't stop doing it. And I want you to know that it speaks volumes to what I feel our relationship is. There were a couple times, and you know me, dude. Uh, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt, but I'll I just start, I'll say things if I want something or I'm. Mm-hmm. And a couple times you check me. We're like, hey, you don't need to scream to me like that. I'm, I know what I need to do. Yeah. But I have an order in which I'm doing it. Yep. So if you would kindly fuck off. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I want you to know that I I received that and appreciate it, dude. Like I speak what I I speak my mind. Yeah. I expect you to speak yours. Or if you don't, by the way, you're going to get steamrolled. I know. Okay, and I, but okay, I also okay. know that you're cuz now that this is this is I mean, it's not 50-50, but it's as close to 50-50 as it cuz we're partners, you know, we're doing all this together, we're touring together. But also, like I know you're my dad. But I also know that we're partners. And I also know that I can't be getting frustrated with you in line when you maybe don't hear me or are just trying to get shit down or just trying to make the line move yep. faster. And I know you have an agenda and I have an agenda and they both coincide, but they're just going to take different paths. So I, I just knew I was like, hey, love you. But nothing bad against you. I heard you the first eight times when you asked me to take a picture with that woman. You got to let me do these four things first yep, and I'll yep. get to it. But other than that, I don't need the... I don't need the Especially if you also first name, last name me in the line. Yeah. Oh, and that fucks me up. I hate I, that I, shit. I, I, and by the uh, way... And you, I know you don't do it on yeah. purpose. I know it's not like, and also in that way, you're just trying to get my yeah. attention. And I'm like, if this dude fucking first name, last name me again, I'm going to turn around and freak out. I do that, <laughs> but I like it. You know, I also, you said something to me. I could kind of tell this weekend that you had, you were bumping up against the limits of notes that I was giving you on your set? No, I wasn't. Uh, it felt like it. By the oh, way, I wasn't. Totally okay. But I also, and I said to you last night, you know what? I got to let you just... Yeah. yeah. But also the the notes for me are great, man. Because again, I'm still so new into this. Yeah. That like yeah, yeah, taking yeah. taking notes from a almost a 30-year vet who was my dad yeah. is always welcome. No, I'll, I'll tell you there was, I don't know, I think I was just like I'll I'll tell you after the to the after the pod off. Yeah, air. it wasn't anything to do with anybody. It was just like uh, I was feeling some type of way. Um, uh, and the last thing I want to do want to say is this: I want you to take that into here. I think what makes 
Part yeah. of what makes this podcast so good is our relationship, but also I think it's important that people see that part of our relationship is that we don't agree all the time. Yeah. And that it's okay not to agree. And even things might, even if they do get uh, testy or that it's as soon as we, the conversation's over, we're back to normal. Yeah, 100%. And so I think it's important, like when you don't agree with me, dude, uh, if there's some generationally, some things where you're like, I just don't. Yep. You know, some things have happened the last, for in the last four or five podcasts. Yeah. But I just want you to feel like, hey, I'm 50% of this fucking show. Yeah, absolutely. And what what's going to make it great is that on some things we're going to disagree and we're going to tell everybody why we disagree. We're going to give our opinions, mm -hmm. but we're going to show everybody that we love each other. And that's what r relationships with your people who you're close with are supposed to be like. Yeah, there should be obviously boundaries and lines, but also you should always be pushing said boundaries and lines with those people that you love. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. important. I agree. Oh, also on another note, it's also business. I am possibly doing a guest spot on Friday. At Kimmel's? Nope. Somewhere else. I, I, I'm going to go. It's with Kool-Aid. He was like, hey, do you want to come and meet the booker for this and possibly do a guestie? And I was like, what night? And he was like, Friday night. And I was like, I'll be there. Fuck it. You want to tell everybody where it is? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I believe it's at the New Woo Dispensary. It's going to be a cannabis show. Uh, doors open at 7.30. Show starts at 8. Um, hey, me, dude. Me, hey, get us some New Woo weed. Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure we're, I'm going to get a package when I leave. I would, I mean, if I'm, if I do a guestie, I would assume. Um, yeah, New New Woo Comedy Club is hosted by Gabe Lopez. Um, Dude, it, Gabe does the dirty at, at oh, the, yeah, 12:30. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were. Uh, that's yeah. what he was telling me about. First comedy show you can smoke at. Um, it is yeah, uh, New Woo. It's uh, one two three five Paiute Circle, Las Vegas. Uh, go check it out. And I will be there. I may be doing a guestie. We're going to find out. But I'm going to go and smoke some weed and see some comics. So if y'all want to come through, come through. Come through. Fuck yeah, some dude. Tickets. I want to tell you how incredibly proud I am of you to do that. It would be very easy for you to rest on what you already have going on, which is a ton of, excuse me, a ton of great stage time. Yep. It's not like you're lacking it. But. This is what it takes to be great. Yeah. You, here's the thing, with everybody and everything, you can do enough to be average. And if that is what you're okay with, and that's how you don't want to push yourself into the uncomfortable, because to be great at something, you have to get uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to fail in you have to do things horrible you, ways. You have to do things you don't want to do. You have and, to. I think it's being uncomfortable with something. That's how you learn about yourself. Success doesn't come without failure. Without a doubt. Dude. And, how, and, and I wouldn't yeah. even call it failure. I would just call it... Trial and error. Yeah. But but you could and you don't. And I appreciate that very much. Well, I uh, thank you for saying that. But I'm also excited because uh, this is my first chance to try out how to make... How to make my story a little more universal now mm -hmm. because usually I'm performing at shows that you're at. So how I start my set is going to be completely different than how I usually do it. So this is my, I'm excited because it's my chance to kind of like try it out in different ways, use different words and, and make these jokes more universally felt by people who don't know who I am. So, I agree. I think that one joke you're talking about at the top where you're describing how people would know you, I think it still works. Dude, it, you know I think it might work better. I Well, you know what's funny? I was telling the dudes in the green room that night, when we're on the road, that joke, it works and it's funny and all, but like when we do the Monday night shows, that bitch kills. Yep. Like I thought it would be the other way around. I was talking about with Kool-Aid. It's like, comedy such an interesting science. Um, but let's, uh, let's get through the business because it's three fifteen and we have a hard out and we got to go hard out. That sounds dirty, but it isn't, um, comedian, Josh.com for tour dates and tickets. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I believe like the 12th and 13th, 11th, 12th, 13th, something like that. Or it's two nights. I think it's the 12th and 13th. Uh, the week after that, Indianapolis, we are in Indianapolis for three nights. And then the week after that, the last weekend here in Vancouver. January, Vancouver, BC, uh, where he will be filming his special. So if we don't know what show that is, so buy tickets to every single one. Um, Saturday night. But I'll be running the special all Friday and Saturday. Buy tickets to every single one. 
Do your thing. You know what it is. Uh, February, our first week is off, but that Valentine's Day, we in Dania Beach for four and a half days? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, I think everybody should come. Yeah, we're going to be in Dania Beach Valentine's Day week, yeah. practically. Yeah. So come see us. Come have some fun. I don't know where we are after that. That's a lot of... We're, I think we're, oh, oh, uh, like the 23rd, 24th, we are in Sacramento and San Francisco. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Is that February? Yeah, February Fuck 23rd, yeah. 24th. Uh, you will be, a, we're going to meet uh, some of Iman's family. Uh, Her aunt, Mona. Is gonna, yeah. We're hopefully going to come to a show. Um, so when we get there, we'll have to reserve uh, a special seat for her. We will. Um, and, uh, but those yeah, are theaters. Uh, yeah, those are, those are going to be awesome shows. But again, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, and, and guys, uh, if you're listening, uh, as usual, we r- really appreciate all the support and all the amazing comments on YouTube and uh, the, everybody listening on Spotify and Apple and wherever you get your podcasts. It's been amazing. We're going to start having guests as soon as we land on a name. So the Wolf Den. House of Wolves, Generation Wolf. Um, I was going to say something, Boomer. What was I going to say? What were you talking about? What was the last thing you said? Uh, 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 oh, oh, two for- shows, guys. If we're, if we're two shows, if we're asking, you, people ask all the time, how can we support you guys? Two shows in particular. There is a Gramercy Theater show in New York City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, come buy those tickets. I want to sell that out and do a second one. So if you can, if you guys would do me a favor, that would be start buying tickets to that show right now in April at the Gramercy Theater. Um, favor number two, Netflix is a joke. May 9th. Um, that was ga- what I was getting to as well. They gave your boy uh, the Bourbon Room, Yow! which isn't the biggest room in the world because I don't think they think that I can fucking sell it. Let's show them differently. Well, I, I, I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Uh, tell, tell, tell your husband, tell your girlfriend, tell your ex, tell people you hate, tell your side chick, tell your side man, tell people you don't like, tell people you like, tell people you work with Los Angeles. We we would really appreciate the support. New York. I see you guys are both in our top five cities. Uh, when I track the podcast, so I know you're listening, man, and we really appreciate the support, but if you want to come out to the show, getting those tickets early is such a huge deal. Uh, for us. So thank you guys so much for that. I got a couple friends who already bought tickets to the Netflix. Fuck show. yeah, dude. So, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you guys always supporting new fans, old fans, Tony fans, whatever you guys want to call it. But thank you guys again uh, for everything. It's the start of the new year. I'm well, fired up, dude. Let's do it. Man. I'm fired up. Let's fucking do it. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much. We love all of you. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Uh, I hope you celebrated with people you love and I hope you told everybody you love them and you did something nice for someone, but keep doing that. We'll see you later. Everybody, we love you. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Later.